Hello everybody, welcome to Chin Fat. In this episode, I'm going to be covering the old school proxy uh, method. Uh, the previous episode to this one, I showed how to use a proprietary Premiere Pro proxy method, which is a little bit different than what I'm going to be using here. This is kind of the old school. And the main reason you would want to use this is because in a more of a, I should say, like studio professional setting, uh, sometimes people take media home and they'll edit it away from the studio. And if you're doing that, or even if you're not in the studio setting, you might choose to use this because you might have a smaller hard drive. You might want to transfer the footage to your laptop or something like that uh, to be able to edit it on the road and you might not have a whole lot of hard drive hard space and you might want to not transfer all those high quality files over to your uh, your laptop hard drive or to a, a portable hard drive because uh, it takes a long time to transfer and you just want to take the proxy files get the editing done then when you come back then you can relink them to the high quality so I'm going to show you how to do that today uh, with the Premiere Pro proprietary proxy workflow you have to take all the footage with you to get it to work now with this you only have to take the proxies uh, which is kind of nice so so let's show you how to do that. I've got three different types of footage here. In the previous episode, I'm not going to uh, stay on. Th I'm not going to talk a whole lot about resolution and uh, frame rate and and maintaining the audio the audio properties, which is entirely necessary. Uh, so I would really recommend before try attempting this, go back and watch the previous episode so you kind of understand the parts on matching your audio properties of your the audio nature of the files that you're working with. Like right here uh, with this 5D Mark III footage, I have frame rate 23.96, but this is a stereo file. And under the drone footage, I have no audio attached to the drone footage. And under the red footage, if I select this, I have two mono channels rather than a stereo channel. Like I said, if you don't understand this, go back to my previous episode before this and watch it. All right, so let's get started here. I'm going to select my... Now, each one of these kind of have their own nature, and you kind of have to figure out what sort of footage, uh, what sort of proxies you want to create. If you don't understand what proxy footage is, go back to my previous lesson, understand it, then come back to this one and then you'll understand it. But it's basically creating smaller files uh, so your computer can run a lot faster and then you're gonna attach them to the high quality footage later on. So I'm gonna, I'm going to export out, now since these are three different cameras, I'm gonna export out each camera, each uh, lump of camera footage by itself. I'm gonna select my 5D Mark III footage and I'm gonna hit Control M, which will open up a window and we're going to send these over to Media Encoder to encode. I do have video and audio with these files here. We're going to use QuickTime, and one of the best, uh, the, and probably the best proxy files to encode them to are going to be Apple ProRes Proxy. And we can uh, we can actually bring down the resolution on this, and so it's, may as well do something to it and bring down the, the, the resolution on these files here. I'm going to uncheck, and we're going to keep these proportional by t changing these from 1080 files to 720 files, bring down the resolution. Or we can even go to 540 if we want to. Go to 540. And this takes it down to 960 by 540. If you really want to get a lot of uh, speed with your files, you can bring your resolution down. We're going to keep the frame rate the same. And I'm going to go under audio. Audio um, it has no problem with proxies. I'm just going to keep it nice high quality audio. That's fine. But this is a stereo channel. This is very important that this is stereo and this is stereo. We've got to match the nature of the audio of the original files. I'm going to go to effects though. I like to burn a time code window into my proxy footage. So I'm going to check under effects. I'm going to check time code overlay and put it in the by like it in the bottom right. So I know that this is my proxy footage. Or you can do a watermark as well. Under effects, you can actually upload a watermark and put, place it wherever you want to as well. So with there, everything's matched. Uh, I'm going to queue and send these to Adobe Media Encoder. This will open up Adobe Media Encoder. Now what I'm going to do here is added all these to Adobe Media Encoder, uh, and, get, and I've got my settings set to them except for the location. What This is really important when it comes to reattaching the high quality footage. What I want to do is, here's, here is my project name, it's called My Awesome Project, ignore this proxy folder that was from the previous episode. Uh, unlike with the Premiere Pro proprietary version, I, want, I did my proxy folder within my same project folder. I want to make my own project location to kind of trick it to reattach, to reconnect to the high quality footage later on. So I'm going to go back one step here and call this one. I'm going to actually copy this name here. I'm going to make a new folder with a new name. I'm going to call this My Awesome Project Proxies. So it's got a unique name. Now that folder has got its own unique name and that's where I'm going to be storing my footage there. So I can actually copy that location there if I want to or I can just find it later. But now I'm going to select all my files here. Control A. And I'm going to click on one of the output file names. These are all set. My custom, my presets are all set up. I'm going to hit output file. And I'm going to go to my proxy folder. And I'm actually, if depending on how big of a project this is, you can stick them all in one folder. Or I, I like organizing them and making them the exact same folder names as in my original project fo folder here. So this is 5D M3. I can actually copy that name while I'm here if I want. Go back to my proxy folder. Right click, do a new folder. And paste in 5D Mark III. I'm going to select that folder. 
and now it's set. I can actually go up here and press play if I want and it will start encoding those files to proxies. Let's go back to Premiere. We're going to do the same to my drone footage. Now my drone footage is a little bit different. This is 4096 by 2160, different resolution. I'm going to cut that in half. I want to cut that down in half uh, proportionally here. So I'm going to go, uh, what is 4096 divided by 2? 4096 divided by 2 is 2048. And since Media Encoder has that little link thing, it'll figure out what my night, because half of 2160 is going to be not, is going to be 1080, but Premiere will figure that out for me anyway. I just have to have one of those numbers because it will figure them out proportionally. Let me show you what I'm talking about. I'm going to select all my uh, drone footage here. Uh, and keep in mind, this does not have any audio on it at all. Like this one has a stereo file. This one has no audio. So I'm going to have to match those audio properties. I'm going to do Control M the letter M as in as in mama and go to format and then go down to ProRes proxy I'm going to change the resolution down here under my video tab I'm going to uncheck under the video tab uncheck width and height and as I figured out with the math this was 2048 by 1080 and I got the link on so it's changing it proportionally uncheck that so I can type in my own custom resolution this has no audio so I'm going to uncheck my audio I'm going to go to effects and add my time code overlay the bottom right where I like it and Q. That should be set so now I'm in a Q and it will send it over to Media Encoder. It's already finished the encoding so it won't continue doing this encoding unless I go up and press play again. If it hasn't finished this it'll just automatically start on this stuff over here. But I want to change the location so I'm going to select these three, hold down shift, I select the top one, hold down shift, select the bottom one and I'm going to check on the location and we're going to go to my awesome proxies. Let's go back to my awesome project and see I've got this next one called drone footage so let's match that name new folder in my proxy location and called drone footage select that folder and I can press play and we'll go back and do one more for the red footage which has its own nature it's got rather than a stereo or no audio this has two mono channels and this is 3840 by 2160 if you divide that in half you get 1920 by 1080 so I'm going to take down my resolution I can even take these down to what would match the aspect ratio is uh, 1280 by 720 as well. That even takes it down to even smaller if I want. So, but I'm going to go 1920 by 1080 on this one. Control M, QuickTime, ProRes Proxy. Go to the Video tab, uncheck this, and we're going to tell this to be uh, 1920 by 1080. Already there, so that's good. Frame rate is going to be based on the source. That's fine, but I'm changing the resolution. The audio here is what I got to change and make it make sure it matches exactly the nature of uh, of the of the red audio channels here. So right now it's got one channel. I'm going to I'm going to change this to a mono channel, and then I'm going to add one more. Now I've got two mono channels, just like I said here. Those are two mono channels. Go to effects. Go down to time code overlay. Bottom right and queue those files into Media Encoder. Now I gotta hurry before it finishes the drone footage because I ha don't have my location set for um, for my red files here. It's still got a little bit so I'm fine. I'm gonna hold down uh, shift and select the bottom here. I'm gonna change the location. Go back to my awesome project and it's just called red so that's an easy one to remember. Go back to proxies, make a red folder under my proxy folder, select that folder and when it's done encoding all this, when it gets done encoding the, the drone footage, it'll go to my red footage and I'll let it do all that. Then we'll come back and show you the next step. And four, three, two, one, finished. All right, we can close Media Encoder. It's finished and back to Premiere. Okay, within this project here, I still, this is still the high quality footage that this is referencing here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to close this project and I'm going to start a new project that's just going to be with the proxy footage. I'm going to right click on this and say close project. Uh, if you want to save the changes, sure I'll save the changes and start a new project. So I'm going to do new project. I'm going to navigate to my proxy footage folder now. Select that folder and call this awesome project, whatever I want to call it. Let's say proxy edit. And I'm going to import my footage. I'm going to go to my proxy folder and grab my 5D Mark III. Drop that in, go to my drone footage, so I can go to my folder here, I can grab all three of these, drag them over, drop them, and they should maintain the folder structure, which they did. There's my proxy footage for my 5D Mark III, my drone footage, and my red. Now what do I want my um, resolution of my timeline to be? I'm just going to go with 1920 by 1080 right now. I've got my red footage selected here. I'm going to drag that over to my timeline, drop it in, and what I have on my general settings here, and what I have on on my preference settings here as I go to edit preferences and on a Mac you're going to go under Adobe Media Pro, uh, Pro and find your preferences but under a PC it's under edit and preferences and I'm going to go down to 
media, I'm going to make sure that I've got scale to frame size uh, adjusted if I have different resolutions, which I do. I have three different resolutions, so I'm going to make it a 1920 by 1080, and when you import this footage, it's going to, I, I want to have that check marked before, I'm going to go to Et Preferences, Media, and you've got to have this set, uh, scale to frame size on um, default media scaling before you import your footage, otherwise you have to add the attribute afterwards. I'm, my next episode is going to be on this. So I'm going to hit OK with that default scaling me media, and it will scale your media inside this 1920 by 1080 timeline I just created with my red footage. That's na Now the proxy footage is 1920 by 1080, so that's what my resolution for this timeline is. Uh, and I know you might have like 4K footage or something, you might want to have that be different later on, which is fine, but for right now I'm going to have it be 1920 by 1080, we can change that later. So I'm going to grab my timeline, drag it out of the red folder, and we're going to call this final edit or something like that, whatever you want to call it. Now I've got a 1920 by 1080 timeline, and I can grab footage and drop it into my timeline. And uh, let's do some quick editing here. This is not going to be super important editing. Just cut some clips down to say we've done some editing. Grab some drone footage, drop that inside. And notice how this is letterbox here because it scaled to meet the uh, requirements of this timeline. Do a little bit of editing. I'm hitting Q and W to cut off the ends of these here. Q to the left, W to the right to cut off uh, the footage here. Drop some of these files, drag in there. Cut this down. Let me mute that audio. Cut that down. Cut that down. And notice here how we have a time code window burned into the corner here. I am now dealing with proxy footage. And this is so big because this ended up being uh, 9, 940 by 540, which is really small resolution. So the time code window is really large. I could have changed that. But now, now I know that I am dealing with my proxy footage and not the high quality footage because I got that time code window burned in there. Now look how smooth this is. As I grab my playhead and I scrub through this, it just goes very quickly, very smoothly, and it look and I can play back. It'll play back really quick. If I hit J rewinds, L forwards, it just does it really, really quick and responds very quickly. And you don't need a really super fast computer to be able to edit this footage now. So now that I've uh, edited my footage down, I have a project that's about a minute and five long. Let's pretend that I've done all my editing. I know this is really not great editing here, but let's say I've done all my editing. And then later on when you're done and you're, you're finished with your editing and you want to move this back to the high quality footage, here is kind of a little trick to do that. And sometimes what I would really recommend doing is putting your proxy on a completely different hard drive and then ejecting that hard drive because it won't know where to find the footage uh, for the proxies. Because when I open that XML, it's going to be looking for that original location, the My Awesome Project proxy location. So another thing you can do to, to trick it, like I said, put the proxies either on a different hard drive, eject that hard drive, or you can trick it by changing the name. I'm just going to change this one to proxy, and then it won't be able to find the original location and it's going to want to know where you and and since it your project file is in this folder now it's going to automatically look through these folders to find the footage and it will find the high quality footage unintentionally over the low quality footage i'm going to take my awesome project proxy copy that put it into my original high quality one paste that in here and uh, i can just rename this if i want to we can go HQ2 because this is our experiment. This is our experiment with the second one, the second method of doing it. Double click on it to open it. It's going to try to locate the media. It found the ones in the, the once again matching the extensions. But here's my full project here. I'm going to go, I'm going to tell it to locate this. Once again, I'm going to uncheck file extension, relink automatically, hit locate, find the ones in my high quality footage. Here it's looking for clip 22, which is right here, clip 22. And there's the file. Make sure display only ma exact name matches is unchecked. Select that. It relinked the others. Everything's re uh, linked to the high quality footage. And once again, since this is the 4K footage, since this is my project that already had everything check marked, scale to frame size, everything's there. Everything works just fine. So now this is accessing the high quality footage. I know that because there is no time code burn window here. And the edit that I have is restored. Um, and there we go. So. So that is the old school method of doing proxy workflow. Kind of the big trick is either changing your uh, proxy folder name once you're done editing or have it on a separate hard drive when you bring your project file over, disconnect the hard drive that your proxy footage is on, and then when you put it, try, put it back into this folder here in the high quality footage and open it up, it will automatically search this location for your media and reattach it as much as it can as long as the extensions aren't, uh, aren't changed. If it's something like red footage then they by nature have to be changed uh, then you're just going to have to do some relinking, relinking and your project will be restored. So if you have any questions please post them and thanks for watching.